Since early on in my YouTube days, one of my missions has been to cover options to play retro games. Pretty much any option available that I could get my hands on and showcase and share with people was something that I thought was of value. And it's been a little while since I've taken a look at a clone system of this type anyway. Uh, it seemed at one point every year there was a few of these things coming out and that's kind of stalled a bit from all the, the main companies, right? But this company, Old School, th they were one of them that were putting out clone consoles and then they started putting out HD versions. And this is the newest one from them, the classic HD3 which plays NES, Super Nintendo, and Genesis, and has a, a few features here. And I, I know this kind of stuff isn't gonna be for everyone, but hey, that's just what I like to cover, is different options, let you guys be the judge of it, but I do wanna test everything out on this and kind of share some of the things that I've noticed with it, right? So they did send this over, they actually let me borrow it. Um, I gotta send this one back, but they let me borrow this. I've had it for around a week or so, and I've been testing it out. Uh, it's now available on their site and Amazon. I'll put links down below if you are interested. But this one, HD uh, 720p aspect ratio switches with region switches. Comes with these two interesting looking controllers. Plays all the games that we mentioned and it also has AV and HD out. Packaging seems okay, not the biggest deal here. Uh, it says it supports original game cartridges, original controllers and homebrew games. Cool. If you want to read that, there you go, freeze frame, bam, but there it is. All games sold separately does not have preloaded games. So keep that in mind. This is not an emulation machine. This is a clone console that tries to be the original systems, right? So some of these have been better than others over the years, that is for sure. But in this category, the cheaper clone console, you know, you have to go into it with the your expectations in check. Here's the uh, little manual, pretty much goes over everything. We don't need to bother with that. But here's the system. But what I was trying to get at, I think, is quality-wise, as far as image and whatnot, you're not gonna, out of something like this, you're not gonna get the same visual quality that you would get from an analog system, an FPGA system, for example. A lot of times these things, uh, even when they have, HDMI, it, it seems like it'll be composite upscaled to HDMI. And sometimes it looks all right, but here it is. I think the uh, build quality here doesn't seem too bad. Some of these things feel and look very cheap. And this one, uh, it's kind of right in the middle. I mean, for the price of it, you know, I wouldn't expect it to be like all metal or, you know, acrylic or something, but the flaps seem fine. I've been using it quite a bit. Haven't had the flaps get stuck or anything. So there's that, you got a reset button, then your power button, which it starts it off, then goes to Genesis, Super Nintendo, and NES. If you could see that, kind of marks them all there. So you have to select which system for whatever cartridge you have in there. And then on the front, you have controller ports, two for each system that's supported, Super Nintendo, uh, Genesis, and NES. And then you have a switch to the left. Uh, it enables the Super Nintendo, and then if you're gonna use NES or Genesis, you have to move it to the right. So keep that in mind. Underneath there is a PAL and NTSC switch, which is nice. Some of these that I've seen and, and messed with before haven't had quite as many switches as this one does. But then it also has an LED on or off, which is gonna be this like bar around it. I'll show that to you in a moment. Um, and then some other region switches here for the different consoles. And then you have an aspect ratio switch, 16943 your micro uh, USB for power, and that's, that's pretty much it with the console itself. Now you also get AV cables, HDMI, a little power brick and cable, very nice. And then you get these controllers. I'm a little conflicted on these controllers, so um, they're not the greatest by any means, but they're not the worst things I've ever held in my hands, but I really don't like them, uh, to be honest. They function, they work okay. It's just the feel. Um, you have a switch back here, Nintendo or Sega orientation, because it does plug into the Super Nintendo, so depending on what system you're using it on, you would flip the switch, Nintendo or Sega. Um, it, it, it functions, to, to me, this is a better controller for Sega Genesis. It's very light as well. Uh, it works pretty fine for Sega Genesis, but when you use it for Super Nintendo, 
I feel like the buttons are too close. Like, if, I don't know, I just like accidentally hit them. Not, not a bad controller, but as you have all those original ports, you can play, use whatever controllers you want. And I have used the uh, 8BitDo 2.4 gigahertz controllers, the wireless with the adapters, and they all work fine. So original controllers, third-party controllers, that kind of thing. Now, to get into gameplay footage and what I've noticed here with this thing, uh, I've tested quite a few cartridges. So uh, we'll start with Genesis. So Genesis, just to point out, um, EverDrive does work, works just fine. Uh, if you wanna play Sega CD off of this on a clone console, there is no like cheaper clone console like this where Sega CD, you'll get the audio. It's just not wired for that. You can play Sega CD. You'll have your basic, uh, you know, sound effects and whatnot, but you won't have the CD soundtrack playing. So Sega CD does work off of this on these, but you're just not getting that CD audio. Uh, playing any of your other games works just fine. Playing original cartridges and some newer, like re-releases and homebrews works just fine. With Sega Genesis, the one thing with these clone consoles, uh, it's always kind of a mixed bag with certain ones with the audio, the visuals. Uh, I think here it, it seems fine. Even with original consoles, there's gonna be variations, different sound chips and stuff like that. But I think Genesis on this device plays like fantastically well. It looks good, it sounds good, but you know, the audio, there's gonna be some slight differences. I don't really notice it as much as maybe NES on this, but color-wise, definitely saturation and stuff like that. It's gonna be a little, uh, I don't know, like it's just a little oversaturated it, it appears, but it doesn't look horrible. Like I said, go into it with your expectations in check. Now, Super Nintendo, same thing, um, the SD2 SNES Pro, or whatever it's called nowadays, the FX Pack Pro or something, uh, works just fine. So EverDrive's for the Super Nintendo worked just fine on this. Had no issues with that. Uh, it's just fine. Uh, playing like reproductions, homebrews, I didn't find any issues with that. Everything that I threw at it worked great. Visuals and audio seem fine. Uh, colors, yeah, the saturation, stuff like that. Audio seems almost on point. Like, I think they really, over the years, these clone consoles kind of dialed in Super Nintendo and Genesis to be quite a bit better than they used to be, but it's still not perfect to if you're using an original system. But even then, using original systems, depending on your, like back in the day on a CRT, you know, there were color differences, stuff like that. So, you know, it could be fine for certain people. I just wanted to share what I seen here. But moving on to NES, which I, I don't think um, any of these consoles that these cheaper clone consoles, such as this or any other ones I've looked at in the past, I think they always kind of are worse with NES for some reason. Here, it's the same thing. Like, I really noticed the audio is off. Uh, it's not crazy. Like, it doesn't sound like a cat's dying or anything like that. But the audio is definitely not correct. It's just too much of a variation from playing on an original or, you know, more recent clone consoles, which is kind of, it's unfair to compare something like this, like any of these under $100 clone consoles to the FPGA clone console that's a couple hundred bucks, if you can find one type of thing. It's not in the same category, but yeah, you know, the, you buy something more expensive, uh, you would expect it to look and sound better type of thing. Now with the NES cartridges, you know, all my original games work just fine. Uh, some homebrew stuff, new releases, all work just fine for the most part. There's one thing I'll point out in a second here. Uh, EverDrive, I only have an EverDrive N8 Pro at this moment. This does not work on this. Doesn't work on any of the uh, cheaper clone consoles that I have or have used in the past. So. I don't know if other EverDrives or flash carts will work, but I have tested a few other multi-carts on this and it seemed to work just fine. Like multi-cart, like 200 something in one, 100 and something in one, 501 type of cart. Those all work just fine on this system without too much issue. Now I did have one cartridge that I'm gonna be doing a separate video on in the future that uh, had like specific games that just, they all worked, but like a specific game here and there, like Super Mario 3, for example, uh, it would be all, had a bunch of little speckles on the screen playing it on this. So I was wondering, wait, are these multi-carts not working? 
on this system? Is it the system itself or is it the multi-cart? So with the multi-carts, what I did was I tested them on multiple cheap clone consoles. And the one example that I found consistent was Super Mario 3. And every cheap clone console I played it on, yeah, I would get those speckles. But playing it on like a original NES or a retro USB AVS clone console, no speckles. So my assumption is it's possibly just the cheap board and the power draw causes issues type of thing. So it may be hit and miss if you have cheap Chinese, you know, multi carts or reproductions type of thing. All the original cartridges that I've used, uh, higher quality official repros and other higher quality repros and homebrews all worked fine without issue on this system. So just something to keep in mind, you know, compatibility may seem okay, but you might find something that gives you issues with any of these clone consoles. None of them are 100% to the original system type of thing. But overall, I think this one is decent for what it is. Uh, there's just so many options out there and you know, plenty of people you know, will find something that suits their needs. And if you're just looking for something that's under a hundred bucks to play you know, Sega, NES, and Super Nintendo, this may be an okay option as long as you understand the colors, the visuals, the audio is not gonna be equivalent to a more expensive clone console. And with the colors and the audio, there may be variations from playing on original systems as well. For me, I think this is one of the better, cheaper clone consoles out there. Uh, I still have like the Retrobit Super Retro Trio Plus, and I would much prefer this over that as this has you know, a little bit more features, but you know, very similar in compatibility and the way things display and look. So just wanted to do this video for you guys. Another option, take it or leave it. It's up to you guys, links down below. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.